Welcome to the locker room. It's been a quiet week in the football world, but <laughs> nevertheless, we've managed to scramble a few topics together, and I think we're going to get a show out of it. Those topics are, was it a penalty? We discuss the controversial end to the Real Madrid-Juventus game. We ask what happened to Barca in the second leg against Roma, and we discuss Pep Guardiola's Champions League record since leaving Barcelona. We welcome in the panel Christian Vieri, Thomas Rungan, Phil Shane and hey. Gary Bailey. And we will tell you first before we get started that the semi-final draw is set. Bayern will face Real Madrid 25th of April in Munich, 2nd of May in Madrid. This is the 25th and the 26th meeting in Europe between the two. And Liverpool will face Roma the 24th of April at Anfield and the 2nd of May at the Olympico as we look at the head-to-head -head records between the sides. But before we look ahead, we're going to look back because there is so much to discuss, so let's get straight to it. Was it a penalty for Real Madrid? Christian Vieri. For me, it wasn't a penalty 100%. Uh, I think those fouls in the box, they happen all the time. I think that if a referee has to give a penalty like that, first thing he has to be in front, not in the back, because in the back he can't see properly. He's not right in front, you know. He's he sees the two the two shoulders of the players. And for me, it wasn't a he, first thing in a game like that. Last second, you got if you give a penalty, it has to be 100 percent accurate. You have to be in front and see it. From the back, it's very hard. And those fouls happen. A lot of times during the game, and we have to, let's not forget that during the game they were you know falling in the box a couple of times. So you know, Come referee, on, referee has to be has to be secure 100. percent We see that's it. an Italian perspective. No, They're just I don't care. I don't, with Juve. No, I don't care about you if they go if they go through. I'm happy. If they don't. Come on. You know how many you, you have a game like that? What do, what do I what do I, what I want to say is that if you're in front, give it. But if you you got to be sure. He's to tackled give a, him from behind. You've yeah. got you to be sure. Yeah, but he's tackled him from behind. He's got a hand on his back, and he's got a foot hitting him, and okay. Vasquez has gone down. Okay, he's got, of course, he's going to go down. It's got to be a penalty. Gonna, of course it is. As soon as I tell you, here's the thing. If he doesn't give it, there's even a bigger problem, because yeah. everyone's going to say, come on, that's a blatant penalty. You're cheating there. So I for know, me, I just, it's I played, a I played 25 years, always in the box like that. You know how many times you try to get penalties like that? You know, you can give, you can't give. But what I would like, what I what I think is that the referee, if you're gonna give it, because you're behind, so you don't know if he touches the ball, pushes him or not. You don't. Yeah, but you got you got assistant refs who can. But he, but he didn't, say, the whole he didn't time. say anything. The assistant ref. He was there saying, but. <laughs> let, yeah. let, let, let's you know first how many times? Foremost. But how many times in the box do you shove? Pull, I, I, from I, behind. I, I, That's I how understand. Thomas earned his paycheck. It's it's <laughs> it's one of the toughest decisions that this referee had to make. Mm -hmm. The call at the moment is unbelievable. There's no right or wrong. Or exactly. It's, it happened so hard. So you got to look first at Vasquez's body position, which is in front of the defender. Yep. There is a push. But is he going down already on a slight contact? That's, that's one other thing. Vasquez has a pretty good opportunity to score. So he probably doesn't want to go down. Then the, the leg comes through. There is contact with the ball, but yep. there's also contact with the torso. So I think this is a penalty, in my opinion, based on the laws Phil, of the game. you called this in live yes. time for our Canadian audience. What was your initial thought? Um, my initial thought was disbelief, because we were getting set for, for added time in one of the greatest Champions League matches that we've seen. And to have it just ripped away at that last moment, I know we're going to get to this perhaps a little bit later, but you can understand why Gigi Buffon just lost it. And he wasn't the only one. Uh, but guys like Batistuta, Vieri's talking about it, Maradona even said, not a penalty. Albelda came out, said, not a penalty. Lineker said it was very soft. If you're going to call plays like that a penalty, there will be a penalty on every single corner kick in the game. There wasn't. He didn't call one for that. You have to remember Lucas Vasquez just a few days before got a yellow card for simulation, trying to get one in the derby. He's won now four penalties this year. He knows how to go into the box, get into the position where contact will come and make it look convincing, perhaps even better than most. Was there contact? Yes, but way too soft to be a 93rd-minute game winner. Question for you, irrelevant of the time, because the time shouldn't have any impact. If that happened after 20 minutes... 
soft penalty. But it's still given as a penalty. So why should it no, be different in okay, the 93rd minute? Ronaldo Gonzalez, in my mind, one of my favorites, mainly because he made every single game a sitcom. But he was also a very good ref. Um, was it Andujar, another old La Liga ref? Both of them have come out and said, not a penalty. I've seen it in Mexico. If you talk to refs, it might not be exactly 50-50, but there is a significant... Uh, plurality of play of refs that might say it was, but there's a consistent number of refs who say so it was some not. Say but, yes and but some the ref say on no. the pitch said it was a penalty. That's, okay. yeah, yeah, right. that's true. The only thing that I say... And VAR wouldn't have overturned it because... Exactly. Yeah. The only thing I say is that the referee is not in front. If you're in front, it is or it isn't. You think it is, okay, it's a penalty. But it's behind. You know what I mean? And when you're behind, you can't see properly. You don't see everything 100%. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Then uh, you want to give it, you give it. There's... Hundreds of penalties okay. you give, you don't give. Yeah. So two yeses, two noes. Now, as Phil alluded to, it was I obviously knows. a no. <laughs> <laughs> it was obviously a very emotional moment for all of the Juventus players, conceding a penalty so late on in this game, and Gigi Buffon's reaction was deemed to be worthy of a red card. Was the referee right to send him off? Again, contact, but it's one of those ones... This is something that Ray talks about when we end up doing Liga and games in France. The ability of the French referees to manage a game, to understand that there's emotion, to understand that it is a contact game, not to let things get out of hand. You have basically just ripped away the last chance for a Champions League medal from one of the icons of the game in the 93rd minute on a controversial call. There's going to be emotion. He's the captain. He has a right to come up and address. Did he put his hand on him? Did he push a little bit? That, again, happens all the time. The amazing thing in my mind is we're talking about an English ref who get the reputation of letting almost anything go, and all of a sudden, it just seemed as though everything was a hair trigger. But hang on a second. Now, what, what you're saying is that because it's Buffon and because it's the last minute, therefore he should consider it differently. No. If a guy comes up to you as a ref, he was bumping and pushing him, he's screaming in his face, I assume he's swearing. I mean, he must have mm -hmm. been swearing. Don't it's assume. In court, court doesn't, doesn't well, exist, I assume. Okay. Uh, so, it, the but, judge, but the the judge ref, is going to say, I mean, it's nothing. But the ref made a decision that he felt it was in his face, and I understand Buffon. I get it. Gary, he can... was just, he was, he was over excited and he got sent off quite rightly and the story he, he, you know, yeah. he, for me he gets sent off quite rightly if he say, if he offends him if yeah. he, we got to see okay you tell me what he said before upstairs yeah. can you tell me no i can't say it <laughs> <on that. laughs> well if he said that yep. Well, then he's got to get set off. Yeah. But, it, but if but he's just yeah, doing that down. and screaming, yeah, it, it, it's it, not it, enough it, right it became such a double whammy because the pk when i watched it i said it probably is one but then when Buffon went off, I, I, yeah. I felt this empty feeling all of a sudden that this is game is going to be decided with not the best goalkeeper in the world in the goal. Yeah. Uh, 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 that, that was the hardest part but, for but me. But does that make it an emotional aspect for all of us as viewers and fans because generally yeah. the general consensus is everybody loves Gigi Buffon? Y yes, and, and you shouldn't make decisions based on, on our, our emotions, but I felt sure. I really felt for him. But I mean, you know him better than I do. I, mean, I agree. Listen, I've known him for 30 years, but... If you say something offensive sure. to the referee, like sure. Kay said upstairs, he's, you're going to get sent off. Yeah. But, but then but he continued afterwards in the mix zone and continued yeah. to say things about the referee. Obviously, you're still emotional after the he game as well. But he, can his actions be justified there? No, I think he should have been calmed down there. But him arguing with the referee is the right thing to do. Because what they did, they managed to do, was delay the match by up to five minutes. Now, anybody other than Cristiano Ronaldo then knows what it would have been like that. I mean, he slotted that penalty, mm -hmm. one of the best penalty finishes I've seen. But the idea is good. You delay the match, you delay, you get in the referee's face, you slow things down. Maybe get a little e extra time added yeah, on. Yeah, and then everyone's around Ronaldo giving him a hard time and, and scuffing up the penalty spot. And they did everything Touching they could. Touching his hair. Yeah, yeah. everything <laughs> they could. Don't well, touch his hair. Yeah. In the NFL, huh? <laughs> icing the kicker. Take a time out. You know, the guy's going, whoa, whoa, whoa wait again. Yeah, yeah, one little yeah. thing that's that has really been addressed well. is if you take a look at Twitter, what's been going on in the headlines, what I guarantee you is probably going on even in person, why would anyone want to be a ref? Because you can say he got the call right, but he has been absolutely vilified. Yeah. So if you ever wonder why a ref can see something in the 93rd minute and let it go, there, just ask you, Michael Oliver. You, there are many supporting him as well, what I, I think might is add. That for me, if it's a penalty, it's a penalty. Mm -hmm. But for me, he wasn't in the right position. But he had, he had the assistant behind the goal. But he had the assistant, assistant on the was like sideline. Uh, <laughs> he didn't say anything. How do you know? Okay. I don't know if he said anything. <laughs> because it would have come and, out in the papers. And yeah. That's For a great sure. point. And I'm going to move on. 
they have to give that referee behind the goal mm -hmm. absolutely more responsibilities. He's the only one, and I agree there in the first that the only one that can make probably the 100% correct decision from behind that responsibility. Bobo knows it's they very have tough. that power, Thomas. Yep. Just a day before, yeah, Alejandro but Hernandez Bono probably swallows, went, oh, well, I swallows be part of this. his microphone correct. when Sterling ends up getting pushed yes. down. If that referee says, uh, Benatia, it's a penalty. Yeah. Okay, he decided he's in front. Yeah. It's a penalty. Well, they're not going to point. It is, they're going to talk penalty. in the microphone, but yeah. I, it happened so quickly. I don't think he got any help from anyone. All right, Good. Real Madrid are now considered favourites to win the Champions League and defend their title. But should conceding three goals at home be a cause for concern for this side? Do they have the defence to go all the way in this tournament you know I mean? again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nothing changes because I. A team concedes three goals. It can happen to anyone. They are the best team. They are the favorite. And they have the number seven mm -hmm. that no one has. And he wins games no. by himself. Because the penalty, he jumps on the 93rd Brilliant. minute over Alexandro Sandro's head like 30 Ooh. centimeters. Yeah. That means you're a Nobody beast. You're, one, you're, you're right. so strong. Awesome. So when you have Ronaldo, you always start 1-0. And yet, funny enough, I think Bayern might actually be happy with the draw. Initially, I was like, oh, the two favourites drawn together from a neutral. You don't want that. But if you're Bayern, you, I think you've got more chance of beating Real Madrid home and away because they're well organised. And last year, they were very, very close, Bayern, to going through. They're well organised. They know that maybe Real are a little bit dodgy in defence at times. They can counter Gary. home and away. On a one-off against Real Madrid, I, anything I, can happen. Well, this is not a one-off. Exactly. You've got better yeah. chance of recovery. It's a two-off. Um, listen, they yeah. Real Madrid has beaten five straight times in the UCL. Not yeah. ties, but not last losses. Year was close, eh? Last year, yeah, okay. So get six, close. six, three is close. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Was extra time. Yeah, okay, all right. Last four times <laughs> Bayern's been knocked out of the Champions <laughs> League has all been by Spanish teams. Real's done it twice. Correct. You're taking a look at an aging Bayern Munich side that's still getting something. Credit to Robin and Ribéry. They're still getting something out of them. But can you imagine Cristiano Ronaldo going up against Kimmich, who's been phenomenal? But this is going to be another level of a lesson. Uh, a couple of other well, good well, defenders. We're looking at the that's coach a, as well here. Your Pankis has got 100% record Correct. of getting to the finals twice with Bayern, once mm -hmm. that he lost, and also with Very Real Madrid. astute coach. He's won at Madrid as well. I mean, mm -hmm. he's going for his third, just like, like Zidane is doing. He's doing three in a row, which is pretty yeah. remarkable as well. That's, no, that's if uh, they, they were to get to the final, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Sir, absolutely. But I think that Bayern is in a better position this year for two reasons. Emotionally, because they got somewhat mm -hmm. Vidal red card, which wasn't a red yeah. card. Yeah. The two yeah. controversial offside goals, which probably mm -hmm. were offside goals for Bayern as yeah. well. And they have, if you're talking about Kimmich, Kimmich starts for the German national team, by the way. German uh, national team is the World Cup. It's the, the World Cup. Win a right? Euro. Almost will come over. No attack will come over. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, they are better than last year. This yeah. is not going to be easy, but I agree. The number seven, depends six on them. goals in, in, in no, nine in the last six against these guys, three in the last four. Mm -hmm. I mean, a remarkable what well, he's done. Well, let's see what you guys all think. Prediction over the course of the two legs, who's going through? Gary. I'm going to go for a no score draw at home, a score draw away, and Bayern goes to on the away. <laughs> what does that mean? He <laughs> puts his way of picking a draw. It's a two, two draw, draw, draw at home, away, score, and they go through. Thomas Bayern goes through. The Jose Mourinho Thomas. special. <laughs> uh, two one for uh, uh, for Madrid and Road. Four one at home. Easy route to the uh, oh, final. Easy. Oh, you said it was a Real Madrid too strong. Because they're going two through the years. Phil. Uh, think of Real Madrid again. Uh, I just have a feeling that they have what it takes. Okay, on this occasion, I'm going for all of B in sports teams. I'm going for Real Madrid too. Okay. So just me on my own. Just right. you on your own. Maybe you can prove us wrong and laugh at us all. Like Oops, that. last Stick you might. Around. You might. When we return, we'll talk Barcelona, no. Roma, City, and Liverpool. Do you want to bring it up? Do you think that's one of the reasons? Welcome back to the locker room in another of the biggest stories of the season. Roma stunned Barcelona to reach the semi-finals. We'll get to the super achievement by the Giallo Rossi, but before we do, we must talk about Barca's third straight exit at this stage. Was Ernesto Valverde too defensive in his approach to the second leg, Thomas? Well, he played the exact starting 11 that played at home. Again, not one change. Rome at home, same 11 as on the road. By the way, talk about coaching. The other coach, I've coached and made four changes. Let, let's talk about Valverde. Real quick, 
Okay, are you, are you, can you guys see this? We'll, we'll, we'll wait a little bit. You're there, you're in shot. At the 38th minute, Messi drops a little bit into midfield for the first time, by the way. Get involved, uh, Mr. Messi. And they slow things down. It almost looks like they're going to sit on this lead comfortably. And in the last 26 games, Mr. Messi's 90 minutes, all right, can we see this? has played as a typical number 10. In both games, he's played ahead of Luis Suarez. Messi just basically either through Valverde or himself took himself out of the game. Fatigue has played such a huge role when here. He and Mr. Front. When he stays up front. Correct. You, you, know, look, why, you this, know why he stays up front? Bubba, look. You know why he stays Suarez up front? Suarez was, was the playmaker. You know why? Look, reversed. He you plays know, as a 10. You know why he stays up front? Because he's tired. Yeah, exactly. You said that last week. So now, so now has it caught up with Valverde not Valverde. resting Messi in these league games to preserve that unbeaten run? Absolutely. Pique, mm -hmm. Iniesta, Busquets, Huge. Suarez, mm -hmm. Messi. You've got to let them rest, my friend Valverde. I can't tell you from Miami. You've got you you to make, make them rest, my friend, because they can't play every three days. The other you've, got, you've got Coutinho, Dembele, Alcacer. You spent 300 million euro for two players, and Alcacer on the bench. You put them against Leganes. You make them play. You don't make sure. those players play because right. then they're going to win the game in Champions League. And you got to make the big guys rest. And, and they can't play all the... They're not 25 years old anymore. I, in my mind, we were talking about this during the break. The moves that Zidane made at the half of his match versus the moves that were not made by Valverde. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, I agree with you 100% the way you framed this. Too pragmatic, too defensive a coach. He didn't want to rattle things up. But when, when all of a sudden water's just pouring in from both sides and your first substitution doesn't come until after the 80th minutes exactly. and it's Andre Gomes, exactly. I mean, something's wrong. I'm not picking on Gomes. I'm picking on Valverde. He had guys, even Alcacer earlier, but especially someone like Dembele, who they spent $100 million on. Put the kid out there to give him a chance. 100%. In fact, just to pick up on that exact same point, when they went 2-0 down, that's when you start to worry because 2-0, you look at it one more and we're out. That was the 58th minute. Right? Dembele comes on in the 85th minute, five minutes from the end. The moment they went 2-0 down, that was the time for me to Valverde yeah, to go. Dembele on, we've got to go with them, we've got to push forward. We cannot sit back because we're in danger of going out here. Nothing changed until they went 3-0 down. You've got five minutes left. Now you start pushing forward. It was way too late. Can we give some credit to Roma, though? In, yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> very, very, it was I, I, a remarkable brilliant. comeback. Only the third team to come from three behind after the first leg of the competition. And who have they shut, who have they shut out? They shut out at Letty. They shut out Chelsea. They shut out Barcelona at home. They have been impenetrable there. When you talk about Messi and Suarez, Hazard and Griezmann, I mean, we have to give some credit to what Di Francesco has done. Allison in the net and Dzeko looking like a world beater up front. Yeah, but, but the most important thing there is is in their last game against Fiorentina, which they lost. And they said, mm -hmm. you know what? We'll take this loss. Kolarov, you sit. De Rossi, you sit. Right and out. you know what? All of a sudden, I come with Schick in that game that Valverde was surprised with as well. So, different. well done. Out coach Valverde. The four chances yeah. made a difference. He, if you don't run, you don't yeah. win. Mm. And, right. uh, and just to say something positive about Barcelona. This is something. There's nothing positive. There is. Gary, what? what? They, I'm they sure will the go on like to win their league oh. title. Yeah, who cares, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Who cares? We're going to do the double. This They're is only who cares. Right alongside Manchester, 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 Manchester City. It's a good point you make, Gary, because many seem to be forgetting that the league title to win is a long and arduous campaign, and it's all the most, like, Pep, who will go on to win a minute, exactly. and Valverde. These achievements have been overlooked. He could win it undefeated, Valverde. And let's just look at this way. What, what, if, what, what, if, what, if, what if Real Madrid do not win the European uh, Champions League? They get nothing this season. Nothing. Barcelona do a league and cup double. Who's the winner at the end of the day? Barcelona. No, no. By a million no. miles. Barcelona has they have, to they have one compete interest. for the UCL final each and every year, not once every four years. And, and you know what? The, the zero losses... Mm -hmm. That has become a preoccupation of the team, Who without cares? a doubt. Who cares? She darts it halfway through, third, fourth, second. I don't care, Ronaldo, you come up for Modric, Isco, we change you. But they might Zidane. not win it, Real Madrid. Well they might end they up might with nothing. Not, they might Barca not. will win the league and have a great so, chance to win the league. And they've been knocked out as a like quarter. They'll win the league. Yeah. So you say that Pep Guardiola has been done a great job at City? It's a decent right. job. Let, well, let's, a go, oh, let's, let's, okay. let's go to Pep. It's better than Man United have won nothing. <laughs> They're still, still heading up, through. perhaps. Liverpool made it to the semi-finals of the Champions League for the first time in a decade with a 5-1 aggregate victory over Man City. So let's focus first on the Beeson side because Pep has had no trouble winning league titles, but since leaving Barcelona, 
He's not taken a side beyond the semis of the tournament. What has stopped him getting to the final again? If I know, I'd be managing Manchester City. <laughs> um, in my mind, it's just his reluctance to change what he thinks works. Um, and it worked at Barcelona because when things start to crack, when the ship starts to sink, they can all come back together at that point as a unified team. They know where they came up through La Masia. They know what to rely on, what to fall back on. But when you take a look at Bayern Munich, you have this hodgepodge of players. You look at the current Barcelona, similar problem. You look at Manchester City, there is no there there. He's still building it. And they're going to spend a lot of money next year to get him one step closer. Uh, the, that's, the that's, jury. A, that's, that's a huge part. part. That's why it worked. But no, 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 no. it worked. What, 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 Messi's still there. They're out. It worked when you had no, Xavi. When, it when worked was, when you had Iniesta. When, when, when you had a younger 21. Busquets. But even to the point I, of Thiago I, coming up, you had that core from La Masia. I, I, I love the way he wants to play. I, I was very fortunate, actually, to live six months with the Croy family. He plays Griff's way. You should Croy love him. In 1980. And, and Johan loves this game. Rios Migos loves this game. So I, I, I understand it. But, Pep, you have to make some adjustments in the big games. And if you don't do that, he, sure. he did it finally against Liverpool. Didn't play Sterling mm -hmm. and another midfielder and it backfired because you know what? If you don't do that very right. often, your team yeah. doesn't right. really and adjust to that. And by the way, he's yeah. lost more first leg away games, K. Murray. Yes, How many? It's a strange stat. It's, it is crazy. A main, five times with Barca and four times with uh, Bayern. He struggled to come away with a positive result, failing to win away yeah. in the first and leg. For, for me, the, the, the biggest tactical error is why play a strong team against Man United in the middle? You've won the league. Rest everyone. In fact, by putting out a second string team, if you lose, no problem. And if you win, you've beaten United with a second string team. Instead, he plays more or less his first team. He brings on Aguero, who goes off injured, yeah. and he's going to win the league the following week. Yeah. That, for me, was a big error because, as Christian said, Man City go into the match yeah. against Liverpool. They're not rested. They've just had a big game against United, and it showed in the second half. Yeah. If we Klopp gets through, he's beaten Bayern. He's beaten Real yeah. in the past. Boston team in the final regardless. And all yes. the former coaches at Bayern and, and, and City have done as much as Pep has done Big as well. So credit to Jurgen yeah. Klopp, and we will get around to talking to him at some point, but we must move on to a short break now. When we return, it's our international connection. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. Our international connection is brought to you by Modelo Especial, and this weekend, Super League leader Basak Shahir will travel to its closest rival, Galatasaray, in a match that will shape the title race with just six games to go. So who wins, Gary Bailey? Um, <laughs> Galatasaray. Or Galatasaray? Galatasaray. Okay. I've been going for them all season, to be Phil. fair. Galatasaray. Uh, in my mind, Bashakshi here looks to be more consistent. And after this, an easier run to the final. Christian? 2-0 Galatasaray. Thomas? I get Galatasaray going down and, and Bashit, whatever Basak your team Shahir is have done yeah. very well against Basak the other issue. <laughs> that up, has up, to be up, said. Join us this weekend. Shares. We've got loads of brilliant live action. We'll be back on Monday. Same time, like top, same place. Top ten in music. One, one group goes up, the other one goes down. With a bullet. <laughs> this segment was brought to you by Modelo Especial. Brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. This segment is brought to you by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. Our international connection is brought to you by Modelo Especial. And this weekend, Super League leader Basak Shahir will travel to its closest rival, Galatasaray, in a match that will shape the title race with just six games to go. Who wins, Gary Bailey? Rafa Tembi Gomez and Galatasaray. Phil. Arda Turan and Basak Shahir. Oh. On the doors, Galatasaray. Hey! And my team is going down. Here. With a bullet. There you go. Divided again in this one. Join us this weekend. Loads of live games. Loads of big How ones as well. We'll be back Monday. Same time, same place. See you then. <laughs>